Hello, uh, my name is Angelo Stolzivis. I'm an assistant professor in post-harvest physiology working for the Department of Horticulture of the University of Georgia. I'm very happy to uh, be part of this year's uh, Fruit School webinars. And I'll be talking to you today about uh, blueberry harvest and post-harvest handling. Let's start with the characteristics of blueberries. Um, blueberries have to be harvested when they're fully ripe for maximum flavor. Uh, as you probably all know, uh, blueberries are highly perishable crops uh, and their shelf life is often limited by increased rates of respiration, softening and water loss, loss of flavor that happens over time, mechanical damage that can occur uh, during harvest, handling, uh, or shipping, and a decay that um, is attributed to many factors such as uh, damage in the skin and high temperatures. Blueberries are high in antioxidants, so consumers are increasingly um, willing to pay to get fresh uh, blueberries. Uh, let's talk about the respiration rates uh, of uh, blueberries and compare them with the respiration rates of other um, berries. As you can see, highlighted in red, blueberries have fairly low respiration rates uh, at uh, both 32 and 67 degrees Fahrenheit. They are uh, at uh, a rate of uh, 6 milliliters per kilogram hour at the low temperatures, but it increases more than tenfold at 67 degrees. That shows how important the temperature management is uh, and how important it is to keep the fruit at the lowest uh, safe temperature, which is 32 Fahrenheit. If we compare it with other berries, such as strawberries, blackberries, cranberries, um, you, you see there's a lot of variation. For example, strawberries, raspberries, and blackberries have high respiration rates and this is why they have a shorter shelf life. Uh, for the ethylene production rates, on the very right, you see the uh, ethylene production rates vary. Uh, they're very low, but they range between 0.1 to 1 uh, ppm. Let's talk about harvesting. Um, you want to train your berry pickers very well, and you want to make sure that they follow a number of guidelines in order for the fruit in the end to have the best quality possible. You want your berry pickers to keep their hands clean and to pick all the right berries from one bush before moving to the next one. They need, they need to be trained to harvest only well ripened fruit and they have to leave the immature fruit on the plant for the next harvest. It's not advisable to pick berries that have a reddish tinge reddish color uh, and mix them with well-ripened berries because uh, this way you get a non-homogeneous uh, harvest and then uh, consumers will complain about the uh, unripe berries that they will buy. They need to be placing their hand under the cluster to, have, to avoid dropping the berries to the ground. They need to avoid overfilling their hands and they shouldn't be squeezing or rolling the fruit. In general, they have to be very careful not to put any trash or any coal berries on, into the container. These have to be discarded in the field. Um, you don't want to allow harvested fruit to remain in the sun. They should be moving them as quickly as possible to a shaded or cooled location. Toads that are used for harvesting should be kept clean and uh, sanitized daily. Some guidelines about the blueberry harvest and storage. You don't want to harvest when the plants uh, are wet because of a morning dew or rain. However, it's advisable to harvest early in the morning or late in the day to take advantage of the low air temperatures. The harvesting should be done by gently teasing the berries of the bushes to reduce the splitting and bruising. Um, and uh, you shouldn't be overfilling the uh, containers or bins uh, in order to reduce compression. 
Bruising is a big problem and it can occur in many points from the field all the way to the consumer's hands. And you wanna avoid um, you know, um, mishandling the fruit. And what is very important to mention, actually the most important thing is that cooling is the number one method of reducing respiration. And by talking about respiration, uh, we mean we reduce respiration, we reduce all the metabolic processes, so we extend the shelf life of the product. So we're trying to start removing the field heat as quickly as possible, if possible in the field, when the berries come off the plant. Here are some pictures of uh, how blueberry ripening uh, progresses uh, from pale green to reddish purple to dark purple, all the way to dark blue. Obviously, uh, the more you move to the right, the better flavor and taste the bears will have. Some more harvest and storage guidelines. Um, you want to pre-cool berries before packing only if these are being packed in a room that is of the same temperature or colder than the berries. Um, and we do that because we want to avoid temperature fluctuation at all costs. Um, by fluctuating the temperature uh, and increasing it after pre-cooling, uh, what you get is condensation uh, on the berries. So this is not advisable at all because condensation on the berries will cause um, infections and then it will uh, cause issues in the final quality. So it's advisable if you don't have the infrastructure to keep berries at a constant temperature, uh, all the way from the field to the consumer, not to pre-cool. However, the quality will be significantly uh, lower compared to pre-cooled uh, blueberries. It's important uh, to continuously remove field heat from the berries in order to reduce aspiration. And therefore, uh, decay and quality decline. It's better to pull cold air across berries in order to remove the field heat, rather than blowing cold air at stacks of berries from above. You need to make sure you're using containers that have openings to allow for horizontal airflow through the berries. One, once the berry temperature has been decreased to the target temperature, that temperature must be maintained all the way to the consumer. You don't want temperature fluctuations and condensation. Machine harvesting with uh, labor shortages has been more and more affordable. However, there are issues you need to uh, take into account when you decide if you're gonna invest in such a harvesting method. The height uh, of uh, the berry fall will determine the bruising and how much of it you will get. And we know that bruising affects storage life. The more you bruise the fruit, the shorter its uh, shelf life it will be. Uh, it's, um, uh, the machine harvesting is used for berries that can be uh, going to processing. Uh, and it's starting to be used for um, berries for fresh consumption um, more and more. There are a lot of um, differences between varieties and uh, you know some varieties have bigger stem scars uh, whereas some others are smaller and they're better for, for uh, machine harvest. Uh, you need to make sure you clean uh, the machine often and remove the, degree, the debris from, from, from it to avoid um, quality issues. In general, blueberries um, can, this is a mistake, uh, are, yeah, I'm sorry. In general, blueberries are less perishable than raspberries and strawberries. They last longer. And this is why you see uh, blueberries from other continents. Uh, you see blueberries year round from Latin America. Uh, and, um, you know, you see that pretty much it's a year-round crop, like bananas, for example. Uh, if uh, storage at 32 is not possible, they can be stored at 41 degrees from two up to seven weeks, depending on the cultivar. 
However, the recommended uh, temperature is 32 degrees Fahrenheit plus or one plus or minus one degree. Internal bruising is a problem and you get it when you see a perfectly fine fruit on the outside. However, internally the fruit has been damaged. And you see how it can progress from non all the way to very severe uh, on the very right. In general, the waxy bloom that those berries have is something that consumers are looking for. So you wanna make sure that you reduce handling as much as possible to avoid removing that bloom from the berries. Um, here are pictures from the West Coast, from California, uh, that uh, show a hand harvesting operation of blueberries. Um, the uh, operation is uh, a smaller one and there are a lot of issues I wanted to point out here. First of all, you see how those crates are placed on the ground and then subsequently some of them are stacked one on top of the other. This is an issue. You could have uh, contamination from um, you know, um, the ground and you could bring rocks or um, you know, debris and you don't want that. Also, uh, it's very possible that those uh, berries are sitting in the sun for too long. So you need to have a shaded area nearby to, to protect the berries from the heat. Here, what I'm talking about, they're stacking the berries, the, the crates that were on the ground, one on top of the other, potentially um, causing food safety issues. Uh, moving on, here is how fields, uh, field totes are dumped in, uh, onto the packing line. It's a conveyor belt moving. And then sorting can be done either by hand, by workers, or it can be done mechanically with optical sorters. There are sorters that can uh, look into the softness or the firmness, if, if I may say, of the berry, and they will eject the berries that are too soft for, um, for packaging. So it's very important because when you have a very soft berry, it will start leaking juices and then you will have um, this juice possibly contaminating the healthy berries around it. Here is how clamshells are filled. Um, they're usually volume filled uh, and then their the lids are snapped closed. And this is this bigger operation. And then you can see here a smaller packing operation where there is someone handling the uh, berries coming from the conveyor belt and the machine is closing the um, lids of those clamshells. Clamshells are then placed in flats and palletized. And then it's very important for all berries to do quality assurance. This should start from the field. You need to be monitoring quality uh, of the fruit uh, for firmness, ripeness, decay incidence, as well as other defects. Um, you want to train your crew to make sure that they harvest only the berries that are ready to be harvested and they have no other quality uh, issues. And you need to give them incentives for better performance. So it's good to reward that good pickers to improve of the overall quality of your harvested uh, berries. Traceability has been uh, very important for the large operations, but it's moving uh, even to smaller operations that I can see here in Georgia, uh, for example. Uh, here's an example of a receiving area uh, because often we have bottleneck situations where berries are, waited, are waiting outside to be unloaded. So it's important to invest in a covered receiving area to avoid berries getting uh, really hot from the sun. Again, here it's quality control. Uh, it's strawberries, but it happens with all berries. Uh, you get quality control at the cooling facility and you have someone measuring the average size, the, the average weight and the average color of uh, berries to make sure that they meet the minimum standards of the, of the company. And here is a slide that summarizes the recommended storage conditions for fresh market blueberries. 
Uh, as I mentioned before, the optimum temperature is 32 degrees Fahrenheit. The optimum relative humidity to avoid water loss is 90 to 95%. The rates of respiration are pretty, uh, of ethylene production are pretty low, 0.1 to 1 microliter per kilogram hour at 41 Fahrenheit. And in general, uh, we know that blueberries are climacteric fruit and they do respond to ethylene. However, their flavor does not improve after harvest. So you want to harvest them and ready to be eaten. You're not going to expect to get an improved um, flavor uh, by treating with ethylene. However, removing ethylene from the storage uh, air can reduce uh, disease development. Controlled atmosphere storage can be used. Um, modified atmosphere packaging for shipments uh, with levels of 15 to 20 percent CO2 and 5 to 10 percent oxygen has been shown to reduce growth of decay. It does reduce respiration and softening rates, and there are ways to cover whole pallets um, and create a modified atmosphere um, condition in those pallets. However, it's Important to mention once again that prompt cooling is the number one way of reducing uh, losses after harvest, and it should be done before any atmosphere modification is considered. Cooling. Uh, now for cooling, forced air cooling is the best way of cooling uh, blueberries. You want to cool fruit at to 32 Fahrenheit as quickly as possible, maintaining a relative humidity of 90 to 95%. This way, you're going to reduce water loss, decay, respiration rates, and overall extend the post-harvest shelf life. Um, in ideal conditions, an average good shelf life for blueberries could be up to four weeks. Here is exa an example of uh, how a forced air cooling system works. You get the berries um, on a pallet, and you get two stacks of pallets uh, on both ends of this big fan. Then the tarp is rolled and the fan is sucking cold air through the berries, um, cooling them down rapidly. It's important to refrigerate all the areas where the berries are sitting, and that could be even the uh, loading dock. So there's nothing that uh, can, should be left at warm conditions because then you can have condensation on the berries because of the high humidity in the air and the temperature change. When berries are shipped across the country uh, or in long distances, it's good to uh, provide support so they don't move around, and they don't get bruised. And here are some um, um, results from uh, work that was done a few years ago. Um, by Cecilia Nunes. Um, and you see blueberries stored at two different temperatures, 32 and 41 Fahrenheit, for up to 14 days. Um, on the y-axis, you see the quality rating. And the higher the number, the higher the quality rating uh, or the higher incidence of this uh, disorder, depending on what we're looking at. So you see here how um, for berries that were stored at 41 degrees, you had taste and aroma declining significantly faster compared to the berries stored at 32 Fahrenheit. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, on the other hand, the uh, firmness had similar declines uh, and so did shriveling. Shriveling uh, increases where similar in both temperatures. Here is a, some data from a trial that was done a few years ago using um, Extent, which is uh, a product available online to um, extend the shelf life of uh, uh, blueberries by creating a uh, modified atmosphere. Um, you see, this is not a very scientific, as I may say, survey. In general, the higher the uh, value you see, the, the higher, the, the, the better the quality of the fruit um, you, uh, they, they found. 
So they, they compared extend with control and they had three different storage durations, 15 days, 28 days, and 35 days. And according to them, uh, to this uh, study, uh, it was a small trial actually, they found out that extent was uh, improving the overall quality of uh, berries by reducing dehydration, decay, color, uh, was remaining in the better, um, uh, better levels. Odor was uh, uh, better in extent, actually it was the same. Um, taste and saleability were all higher in um, extent treated fruit compared to control. But again, it's a smaller trial, so more work has to be done. Um, this is a very interesting um, um, experiment that was done from North Carolina Extension, and it shows on the left the uh, percent of decayed fruit in three different temperatures. And uh, you see on the X, we have zero to 40 days of storage, and on the Y axis, we have zero to 100% decay fruit. So for fruit that were stored at 72 degrees, about 12 days after harvest, uh, all, almost all of them were decaying. For uh, 50 degree stored fruit, about 85% uh, of the fruit had decay uh, 18 days after um, harvest. Whereas for 34 uh, Fahrenheit uh, degree stored fruit, even after 40 days of har uh, after harvest, about 65% of uh, this fruit had decay uh, growing. So you can, you can tell how big uh, of a difference we see and how important it is to reduce the temperature to the lowest safe point. On the right, you see the cooling rates for blueberries uh, in forced air cooling versus still air. So still air is just sticking uh, boxes of berries in a cold room, forced air cooling is performing the forced air cooling uh, that I, I showed earlier. You see the temperature, um, how it changes over time in minutes from zero to 120. So they did for up to two hours. Uh, for still air, they started at 75 and they barely went to 74 degrees after, after two hours of, um, uh, of storage in uh, the cold room. However, for forced air cooling, they started from 75 and they went down to 58 degrees after about two hours of forced air cooling. Uh, and you know, you see how much more efficient and much more effective is forced air cooling in uh, reducing the fruit temperature. Um, I wanted to check what's going on with new harvesting options. So I went online and I found that lately there is this new harvester developed by a professor in uh, Oregon State University, and it has a soft surface uh, for catching the berries. The uh, cost is pretty high, it's about a quarter million dollars. And according to him, he's uh, mentioning that machine harvested fruit uh, with this uh, soft catching system will have a similar quality as hand picked fruit. Uh, in, in general, they claim that about 75% uh, of this ha of the harvest will make it through sorting, which is very uh, impressive for a machine harvester. Um, I'm going to touch upon methods for uh, uh, controlling decay. As I said, uh, temperature management is very important. So CA, especially elevated CO2, can uh, mitigate this problem. Biological control can be used. Irradiation uh, has been used, but not commercially. Um, ozone in air uh, has been used, but it's not being used commercially, from what I know. And sulfur dioxide fumigation uh, has been used for blueberry decay control. With that, I'd like to thank you for your attention. And I'll be happy for, to answer any questions. You can reach out to me um, via email. Thanks again for uh, attending and uh, have a good day. Bye-bye.